In April of 2012, an American robin built a nest atop my porch light. I mounted a webcam under the awning 8 inches from the nest. I must warn you that the survival rate of American robins during the first year is only 25%, and there is footage within this documentary that provides visual support of that statistic. The American robin returns from migration each year during February or March. The breeding period is generally April through July. Nests are built by the female alone using grass and twigs. She then smears the inside with mud and presses down soft grass as a final touch. On April 7th, it was evident that the first egg had been laid. Robins can have two or three broods per season with a clutch size of three to five eggs. This sparrow appears to be harmlessly investigating the nest, perhaps to simplify the task of finding nest supplies of its own. Harmless as it may be, the female robin returns to make it known this nest is not vacant. The next opportunity seems prime for the sparrow and the commitment to acquire some nest materials becomes clear. A subsequent return by the sparrow transforms into an awkward encounter. The female robin is calm, but makes it clear the sparrow is not welcome. The sparrow's plans are futile, and as such, it departs. Birds that have a primary diet of fruit and berries lay their eggs right away in the morning. Robins, however, eat a lot of earthworms, and the heat from the sun causes earthworms to crawl deep into the soil to cool off. Because of this, robins spend the early morning searching for worms when the soil temperature is at its lowest, and lay their eggs just before noon instead. Success. On April 9th, I changed the location of the webcam because I was unable to see into the nest properly. We now have three eggs. Robins rotate their eggs so that warmth from their brood patch under their stomach is spread evenly. If too much heat is concentrated in one spot, the unborn robin may adhere to the inside of the shell. Female robins almost always stay on the nest during inclement weather even as juvenile hatchlings become older. The time has come for the first egg to hatch. The incubation period for robins is around 14 days. Watch the egg in the background as the female robin's pecking actions create a small hole in the shell. Once the outside of the shell is compromised, it's time to come out. For us, this means twins. The female feeds one of the hatchlings. Eventually, the female removes the shell from the nest. Robins like to keep a tidy nest, but removing the shell is also a threat prevention activity. Some predators can smell an open shell and invade a nest. The robin may fly the shell up to a mile away from the nest. Removing the shell, of course, is only a prevention technique. The threat of predators is still very real. You may have already noticed a stark change in the robin's demeanor. This robin is taking a defense position. The noise you just heard was a crow landing on the deck railing. Crows are common predators to robins and are known for invading nests. The same is true for blue jays, grackles, and ravens. At this point, there's little that can be done. The actions of the crow cracked the remaining egg, which caused the hatchling to emerge. This is the last hope in this clutch of eggs. Crime scenes, however, are often returned to. The female returns with a treat for the last hatchling, but the nest is now empty.
With an empty nest, there's no reason to stay. Later that summer, I recorded a different robin 20 miles south of where I live by mounting a webcam in a tree at a friend's house. The egg laying process is no different than we saw before. This robin lays a total of three eggs as well. The robin protects the egg from the rain, but it can do little to protect the nest from being discovered by the neighbor's daughter. Approaching the nest, especially when eggs are present, obviously upsets the female robin. It's very important not to draw attention to nests, as predators can watch for this. Just prior to this clip, the nest was invaded by both a crow and a blue jay at the same time. One of the two remaining eggs is cracked as a result of the earlier invasion. The incubation period had only just begun, and this now creates a risk for the healthy egg. To save the final egg, the female's instincts tell her to remove the damaged egg. On a separate occasion, a gray catbird invades the nest. Unlike the sparrow before, the catbird is not interested in nest materials, but rather the fluid and portions of the developing robin inside the egg. While this is certainly grotesque according to human standards, the catbird's perspective is simply a matter of nutrients and survival. It appears as though this even applies to the very species that laid the egg. Predators 2, Robins 0. The most interesting events occurred back home the following year in 2013 on the very same porch light. I watched a robin just finish building this nest, yet a pair of finches seem right at home. Any guesses as to who eventually takes ownership of the nest? The original robin, or perhaps this pair of finches? You might be as surprised as I was. Neither one. A common dove moves right in. Why not? This nest has potential, and with a few modifications, it'll be perfect. Look at that, a pristine white egg. Strangely enough, however, the very next day, both the egg and the doves were gone, as quickly as they appeared. I then removed the nest. The breeding period was still active, and it wasn't long before another nest was built. Again, by a robin. By May 12th, the first egg was laid. If the outdoor temperature becomes excessive, robins maintain their body temperature by opening their mouth and panting. By May 16th, this robin had laid four eggs. Remember, clutches may vary in size from three to five eggs. On May 25th, two eggs had gone missing. Given the track record so far, I assumed a predator had invaded the nest. Or perhaps the eggs were blown from the nest by strong winds from the summer storms we've been having. May 27th marked the 15th day of incubation. Recall that the incubation period is usually 14 days. However, neither of these eggs are hatched. I began to be concerned for the eggs, but I also began to wonder if the behavior of bringing food to the nest is an instinct based on how much time has passed 
versus visual evidence of a hatchling being present. Later that day, the female brought new grass to the nest, as though it were building a new one. But there was already a nest, and two eggs. At the time, this behavior seemed strange to me. The male joins the female, and together, they share a quiet moment. Remember how I mentioned the female almost always stays on the nest during inclement weather? The biggest storm of the summer, and no mother to be found. I began to think the eggs were infertile. If we take a look at the data, the female robin initially laid a single egg per day, as we would expect. Then the incubation period began. On May 25th, the eggs began disappearing. I later found that the female robin was removing the eggs herself. I absolutely expected an empty nest on May 30th. To the contrary, bringing grass to the nest was for a reason. There was another clutch to be had. Five eggs! Of course, one was old and would eventually disappear, as expected. On June 12th, the first egg hatched. This hatchling barely has enough strength to lift its disproportionate head. Later that day, the female reveals to us twins again. A nest of three. Let the feast begin. Here the mother brings a nice-sized larva. This one is too large for the youngest of the three. The older hatchling is happy to volunteer. Now all four eggs have hatched. If you watch closely, you can actually see the eaten food move slowly into the body cavity of the hatchling. Waste accumulation does not occur in the nest. The female removes it herself. The male plays a role as well, bringing a large earthworm to the growing hatchlings. Like humans, two caretakers are better than one. Look at how the hatchlings are growing. This is day five. The juvenile robin's eyes now begin to open. The female was very efficient during the hunt for food this time. A larva, moth, and worm, all at once. Juveniles pant in the summer heat just like adults. Notice the trachea opening and closing. On June 21st, a decent sized storm came through. Now you can see what it looked like for me to watch this experience from inside. Look at that wind. Watch the female on the porch rail eat a worm. Lightning strikes and she flies up to protect the nest. On June 22nd, I added another camera angle. One of the juveniles stands out among the rest. This one is preparing to leave the nest the following day. 
When a juvenile robin leaves the nest, it's referred to as fledging the nest. In this case, it's almost questionable whether it was on its own initiative or if it had help from its siblings. It lands safely in a plastic container with leftovers of an old box garden I had. The robin's senses are on high alert. Everything it's experiencing is brand new and a bit of a challenge. Juveniles often follow their parents around for the first few days until they learn how to get food on their own. This juvenile is in a strange place. It has left the nest, but there's more freedom to be had. The distance from the deck to the ground is greater than the distance from the nest to the deck. Time for a moment of reflection. There you go, safe and sound in the soft grass below. The next juvenile is ready to fledge the nest the following day. A little practice first, and maybe a push from the siblings again. Whoops. This one has a lot more energy than the first and is ready to explore the world. Hmm, where should I go? In the next shot, it's actually our little robin up on the railing. Way to go! What a big world out there! And a good headwind for a nice takeoff. It found some shade near this small birdhouse and spent about 30 minutes there. Like the first, it received some dietary support. Whoa, the wind is pretty strong. Now it's calmed down a bit. Here we go, and... Nope, I'm not quite ready yet. You can see the intention in this one. Finally, it's ready to fly. It looks like it may have flown onto the roof, but the wings need a few days to develop yet. Like the first, it landed safely in the grass below. The day the third one floods the nest, I had surgery and was unable to record it. The fourth one, however, is ready to go. This one was stubborn and did not want to leave the nest for several days. As it departs, I'd like to thank you for watching Tragedy and Triumph, an American Robin documentary.